The EDSS cloth comes in two different types of material, a urethane rubber and a solid urethane rubber. So I tried welding some cuffs to a brown clog and what I found is that. Let me show you up close. It appears that it's welded really well, right? But look how easily this pops off. Just like so. So a really important note, glad I learned this, the brown does not weld to the cuffs. However, the black urethane clog welds excellently to the Easy Care cuffs. So during this video, I used a practice composite foot as a template to build my shoe for. Most of the time, you're gonna need to go up a shoe size. The reason is you're gonna need to have enough shoe to be able to trim off the clog so you have a flat area to weld the cuff to. Trace your foot to the clog that is the appropriate size. When you're cutting off the excess material, make sure you don't cut it too close to the edge of your line. Leave a tiny bit extra, that way you have a little bit to grind, as well as when you go to heat up the material, there is a little bit of shrinkage. And then go ahead and take your shoe to the grinder, smooth off the edges, as well as remove the shiny edge of the bevel on the clog. Once you've done that, go ahead and build the mechanics you want in the shoe before you end up welding the cuffs on. This is an important step. While your heat gun is warming up, go ahead and mark where you want the front of your cuffs to start on the clog. I have my heat gun at around a thousand degrees. I start with heating about the first inch and a half of my toe, about half inch in front of my line, and about an inch behind my line. Then I'll heat up my cuff, and I'll heat it up to about the first little hole that you see there. You can see how that the cuff is starting to have little waves in it. When that happens, you know that the urethane rubber is becoming liquid, and then it's ready to weld. I'll make sure that my shoe's ready to weld, and when I press this two together, you'll see the two materials are starting to blend together. You can see black and clear material ooze out together as the materials are compressed. I'll hold my shoe there for just a moment, start letting it cool, and then I'll continue welding, making sure that I'm pushing straight down on top of my shoe towards my welding table, you can notice that the heat gun is pointing directly into the V. It's not too much on the shoe and it's not too much on the cuff. I'm doing this in real time so that you can see really what it looks like. I've got a timer here going in the right hand corner just to give you an idea. Near the end, once it's ready to be released from the clamp, I'll go ahead and press the cuff and the shoe together where I want it and then let it cool. No air bubbles, nice clean weld. I'll go ahead and then create a weld at the beginning and end of my cuff so I have a nice seamless attachment. This is just pressing the material into the table. I'll do this on both sides. That way I know I have a nice strong weld. Now all we need to do is trim the excess material of the cuff and then do another heat pass to blend it into the shoe. Once you've trimmed the cuff back to the top of the little edge there, I'll go ahead and weld that seam back into the bevel of the shoe. And the way I've been doing that is heating up the entire bottom of the cuff to a welding heat, as well as the bottom of the shoe. And then just much like blending in the edges, I'll compress that material into each other by just rolling the shoe along the edge. And what that does is it minimizes any chance of the cuff getting dirt caught in it and trying to peel it off. 
Then I'll go ahead and clean that up with my grinder once it's cooled. Another important step is putting a bevel or round over on the edge of your hoof wall, much like you would be doing maybe a trim. And this allows the shoe to slide in over the foot without getting caught on any of its sharp edges. So another important note, when you go to build a pair of shoes, you're gonna want two pairs of cuffs. Otherwise, if you get one pair, you only have enough for one shoe. Here we are, here's our finished shoe that we made for this template. Dr. Mike Stewart was the original inventor of the clog and nowadays we have multiple different options of a clog. Using this urethane clog is great for horses that have founder or laminitis, could be for a horse that has ring bone, whether it's high or low, paston or coffin joint, could be for a horse that has coffin joint disease, or even for a horse that has like a collateral ligament strain. Being able to put a shoe on that has an indirect glue method, meaning not having to use nails or screws or cast, gives you so many more options than we used to have. I love that, that we can use the EDSS clog along with the uh, Easy Care cuff from Easy Care. So if you have a horse that needs a certain kind of mechanics built into the shoe and you don't have the option to be able to nail or cast it on and you wanna be able to do an indirect glue method, this technique I'm really confident is gonna work. I've field tested on multiple horses using the urethane, EDSS clog along with the Easy Care cuff is a great technique. Hopefully these tips have been helpful for you. Have an awesome day. Cheerio.